Dr. Mayra, Dr. Ahmed, um, Dr. Saira, and Dr. Pilal, and all their committees. Uh, a big hand for them, and uh, kudos to arranging this spectacular conference. And uh, to them, I would like to dedicate a small verse. And it says, Heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by a sudden flight, but they, as their companions slept, were toiling upwards in the night. So I'm sure a lot of toil and trouble and sweat has gone to make this conference what it is. So, uh, So, 
soul, there is a huge loss of human resource. In people who are suffering from osteoporosis and because of those who have fractures because of osteoporosis, and uh, because of these fractures, they tend to stay much longer in the hospitals than other morbid diseases. And 20% of the of the affectees are severely impaired mobility at the end of the first year. 50% experience normal pain and disability, and falling hip fracture and falling hip fractures. The chances of a second one rise many. And when we consider the economic impact that it has on the world, the costs are tremendous. In 1990, it was seen that 34.8 billion uh, people were affected. 2010, 2017, sorry, uh, this is the uh, cost. This is the cost of treatment. Yes, this was uh, in 1990, it was uh, 34.8 billion dollars. 
bloodstream, which in turn leads to calcium deposition in the blood vessels internal. This in turn causes increasing arteriosclerosis and progressive calcification of the vasculature, thereby leading to the risk of hypertension, strokes, and ischemic heart disease. So again, unfortunately, it is a grossly neglected disease, reasons being lack of awareness, oblivion to health needs and symptoms, and a state of denial. And attribution of the symptoms simply to aging. And this is a very scary slide because this shows the prediction and the total number of hip fractures globally were 1.2 million in 1990 and they are predicted to rise to 2.6 million in 2025, 4.5 million in 2050. The incidence therefore rising by 310% in men and by 40% in women. So now what to do? Obviously, what comes to our mind is diagnose and treat, diagnose and treat, diagnose and treat. And we know that this is the diagnostic criteria, risk factor evaluation, and the vulnerable density testing. So who should be tested? All the women of 65 and older, regardless of risk factors. Younger post-menopausal women with one or more risk factors, post-menopausal women who present with fractures, and all men above 70 years. And these are, we all know some of the major risk factors in females, history of osteoporotic fractures and adult history of low trauma, fracture refers to the relative, thin or small frame, the so-called frailty syndrome, Smoking, alcohol and take or corticosteroids therapy for more than three months. This is uh, a biggest, this is the biggest enemy, I would say, because normally also the, uh, okay, no, uh, some of the more additional factors which are there uh, are genetics, advanced age, a diet, low in calcium, decreased activity, estrogen deficiencies at an early age, impaired vitamin dementia, etc. And the risk factors that we see in males are decreased testosterone levels and again glucocorticoid use and then use of alcohol, smoking, aviated drinks and other diseases such as hyperparathyroidism, intestinal malignancy, immobilization, etc. So this is a very big the glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis, and this occurs regardless of age and gender. In and we see that at times glucocorticoids are genuinely prescribed in a lot of diseases, and at times they are just given randomly by a lot of you know quacks sitting outside in a lot of um, small clinics and. Uh, that way leading to a much increased risk of osteoporosis with its resultant fractures. So how to treat? You know that we need to initiate treatment to reduce fracture risk in women and men for their 50 years of age with a BMD of less than minus 2.5 with no risk factors, BMD of less than 1.5 with one or more risk factors and history of prior vertebral or hip fracture. So indeed, this is a nightmare. It is a nightmare. It is the biggest tsunami which is going to hit us. It is and what needs to be done. The disease burden of osteoporosis along with its multi-morbidity is simply alarming and a major health problem. Preventive measures at public health level are urgently required to tackle this devastating disease. The entire healthcare system needs to be modified towards preventive strategies. Because this is better prevented than treated. So we all know this is the normal on microarchitecture and we must try to preserve this as long as we can before
code it becomes like this. Okay, so this is a journey, this is the journey of osteoporosis. This is the journey of osteoporosis. And when I look at this picture, I am reminded of an ayat from the Quran in which Allah says, Women attend these, these OPDs 
and we have to take measures at the national level, rather global level, to fight osteoporosis. The quiescent killer, which doesn't know, which doesn't uh, let us know that it's a slow poison which is leading to our death. So, to end, I would like to end on a slightly different note. And uh, as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, and this is the uh, translation, he advised to take care of five before five. So, take care of your youth before your old age, your health before your illness, your wealth before your poverty, your free time before your work and your life before your death. Because this journey, this path of life, we traverse only once. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your time and attention. Thank you very much.